All right, guys, as you all gather in the grand hall, lined up in front of the mirrors, an air of anticipation fills the room. The 16 of you stand ready, your reflection staring back at you from the mystical glass. The mirrors seem ordinary at first, but then a soft hum begins to resonate throughout the hall. The hum grows louder, and one by one, six mirrors start to pulse with a vibrant, otherworldly light. The reflections of the chosen individuals glow with a radiant energy while the other ten mirrors slowly dim, their light fading into shadows. The man behind the desk slams his hands onto the wood. By the gods, the mirrors have spoken. Step forward, chosen ones, for you have been marked by the divine light. The rest of you, your time will come. For now, watch and prepare, for your journey in Ferrandor is only beginning. Johnny, Gordon, Donald, Samuel, Elon, and Liam, you have been chosen by the viewers. Suddenly, the magical force wraps around you six, and your generic forms begin to shimmer and shift, each one unique and mesmerizing. Johnny, your skin begins to ripple like water, shifting and changing hue as your features become fluid and ethereal. Your form elongates, becoming lithe and agile. Your eyes turn a striking silver, and your hair morphs into a cascade of ever-changing colors. Instruments appear around you, hovering in the air, ready for your command. You stand as a changeling bard, an embodiment of artistic grace and mystical charm. Ah, well, look at that, mate. Seems I've acquired a rather dashing new look, haven't I? Changeling bard, you say? Quite fitting for a man of my many talents and endless charm. Now, where's the rum? Gordon, feathers sprout from your skin, covering you in a beautiful plumage of blues and whites. Your arms stretch into powerful wings, and your feet morph into sharp talons. Yes, I'm a chicken! A serene aura surrounds you, emanating peace and tranquility. I'm sorry, what in fucking what? A holy symbol glows on your chest, signifying your divine connection. You transform into an Aarakocra cleric, a beacon of celestial light and healing. Well, I'm sure I'll find some way to put a spin on this. Donald, your body expands and hardens, your skin transforming into a tough green shell. Your limbs grow muscular and powerful, ending in large, clawed hands and feet. Your face becomes that of a tortoise, with wise, steady eyes peering out. You radiate strength and resilience, ready to defend and protect. You emerge as a tortle barbarian, a fortress of primal power and endurance. Oh my god, what's happened to me? I look like that Master Shen Pu guy now. It's Master Shen Zhu. Oi, shut it, you. You're not a part of this. Samuel, horns sprout from your head, curling menacingly as your body enlarges and becomes covered in thick, dark fur. Your legs transform into powerful hooves and your hands become massive and clawed. Your eyes burn with an intense, unwavering resolve. A massive shield and a gleaming sword appear at your side, symbols of your unyielding oath. You stand firm as a minotaur paladin, a living symbol of conquest and duty. Hell yeah. I dare you to try throw me around this time. I double dare you. Elon, your form shrinks slightly, becoming more nimble and agile. Your ears elongate into a distinctive rabbit-like shape, and your nose twitches with curiosity. Your fur is a soft, shimmering silver. A timepiece hangs around your neck, glowing with arcane energy. Your eyes sparkle with intelligence and mischief. You are now a Harangon wizard, a master of chronomancy and arcane secrets. Here's to hoping I can match the mighty Tronald. I can answer that for you right now. No, you can't. Liam, your body shrinks dramatically, becoming lean and wiry. Your skin turns a dark green and your features become sharp and cunning. Your eyes glow a fierce yellow and your teeth sharpen into tiny fangs. Dark, magical runes appear on your skin, pulsating with a blood-red energy. Your hands grip cruel, serrated blades. You transform into a goblin blood hunter, a fierce and relentless tracker of the night. Oh, nice. I've always wanted to be a goblin blood hunter. Good luck to all of you. I'm sure you'll smash it. Yeah, make us proud out there, guys. The old man, his eyes gleaming with excitement, taps his hand thrice on the desk in front of him. Suddenly, the dull gray portal flares to life, casting a brilliant, swirling light throughout the room. Go now, heroes. Do what you were born to do. Step through the portal and begin your journey in Ferrandor. The fate of the land rests in your hands. May the gods watch over you and guide your path. Wait, why are we in a loading screen? Honestly, I have no idea, but it's cool. So do any of you actually have any plans on where we should start when we land? Not one bit, but we usually just wing it until it starts going in our favor. I like the sound of that. 
It's all very chaotic. As you all step onto solid ground, you find yourselves in a lush, grassy area. The scent of blooming flowers fills the air, and the sound of a gentle stream can be heard nearby. Ancient trees with sprawling branches provide dappled shade, while vibrant plants create a whimsical, enchanting atmosphere. Ornate benches and intricately carved statues dot the landscape, giving the place an air of beauty and history. You seem to be in a city of some kind. The tall spires and grand buildings visible through the trees hint at its vastness. The air is filled with the distant hum of activity, yet this garden seems like a peaceful oasis amidst the urban sprawl. You turn around to look through the portal that brought you here, but it has vanished without a trace. All right then, so this is it, ladies and gents. This is where our story begins. So, Joe said that the king of this land has descended into despair of some kind, and his people are suffering because of it. Do you reckon we're in the city where the king is, Saxy? I mean, sorry, what do I even call you now? Don't worry about it, man. It's going to take some getting used to. You can call me Optimus Prime. Ah, uh, nice. A play on words. You can call me Sheldon. My name is Birdman. Wow, real creative there. Who needs creativity when you've got talons like these? I mean, just look at them. Exactly. What's your name then? You can address me as Hornaldo. Hornaldo? I see what you tried to do there, but I think the execution of it leaves a lot to be desired. Oh great, so we're already starting this bullshit. Now that would have been an impeccable name. What would have been? Bullshit. Well, you can call me Gurgle. Gurgle these nuts. Well, that's just uncalled for. Huh, nut jokes. Gotta love them. Why does everything always devolve into nut jokes? This is the way. This, this is, is the, the way. way. All right, whatever. What's your name then, Mr. Changeling? I have chosen the name Rumple. Okay, so we've got Rumple, Sheldon, Hornaldo, Optimus Prime, Gurgle, and Birdman. That's me. They're all great names, truly fitting for a band of heroes. Optimus, you never answered my question. Do you think we're in the city where the king is? How the hell should I know, man? We should probably ask around, try to get some information of some of the locals. All right, Joe. I want to begin searching the area for somebody. Give me an investigation check, Rumple. Ooh, that's a 16, Joe. Very nice. Nice, okay. You begin your search, eyes scanning the lush, grassy park. After about a minute of walking, you come upon a lively scene. A small carnival has set up in the heart of the park, drawing a crowd of curious onlookers. Colorful banners flap in the breeze, and laughter fills the air. To your left, a puppet show captivates children and adults alike, with marionettes dancing and acting out a comical tale. Nearby, a street magician performs tricks, pulling flowers from hats and coins from behind ears, much to the delight of his audience. Jugglers toss flaming torches high into the air, their movements precise and mesmerizing. But as entertaining as these sights are, something else catches your eye. A glint of light flickers from the nearby stream. You turn your attention to it and notice a bottle bobbing gently along the current. Ooh, could it be? Is it possible that my prayers have been answered? Joe, I walk up to the bottle and have a closer look. Intrigued, you step closer, realizing that this might be more than just an ordinary bottle. I pick it up. You reach out and carefully retrieve it from the water. The bottle is beautifully crafted, with intricate designs etched into the glass. Hmm, how intriguing. You sense a strange energy emanating from it. I want to sniff it, Joe. What do I smell? Taking a deep whiff, you catch the scent of something unmistakable. It is the beautiful aroma of rum. By the sea and stars, this looks like a fine bottle of rum. A most fortuitous find, wouldn't you say? You. Dude, if you want rum so badly we can get you a fresh bottle, God knows how long that's been floating there. No, I want this bottle. I pop it open and have a swig. You pop open the cork, suddenly a plume of smoke emerges, and a figure materializes before you. It appears to be a genie, swaying slightly, clearly intoxicated. Ahoy there, mystical floaty man. Ahoy there, matey. You found me bottle of rum, did you? Well, lucky you. I be a genie of sorts. Here to grant you a wish. But remember, the seas be full of surprises and wishes. Well, they have a mind of their own, Savvy. So, what's it gonna be? What grand desire fills your heart? All right, guys, get to commenting. Remember, it can be as related or unrelated to what's currently unfolding as you wish.